Now we'll discuss the last and the first point, that is Eid al-Adha or Yawm al-Nahar. That is the day of sacrifice. The Eid of sacrifice or the day of sacrifice. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked Prophet Ibrahim that what do you love the most in this world? But naturally after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, my son, Ismail alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests Ibrahim alayhi salam that can you sacrifice him for me? And Ibrahim Islam goes and tells his son Ismail alayhi salam and he says, don't worry father, you will find me steadfast. And on the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's about to sacrifice his son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces it with a sacrifice of animal. And this is what we remember every year in Eid al-Adha, that we should be able to sacrifice anything in this world for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And during Yohamu nahar day of sacrifice, and Eid al-Adha, the day of sacrifice, we if we have the means, we sacrifice an animal. For one person it is a goat, or if you want to do a big animal like a cow or a camel, it can be for, for seven people. And it's mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 37. It is not their meat or blood that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is a party which reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't sacrifice so that the blood and the meat reaches to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we do it for our taqwa. Our piety should reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what do we do? With the sacrifice, when we sacrifice the animal, we distribute it amongst the poor people, amongst the friends, amongst the relatives, and keep some for ourselves. Normally, it is recommended that, that minimum one-third should be given to the poor people, one-third to the family and friends, and the maximum you can keep yourself is one-third. This is a practice. Let me tell you the salient features that should be done on Eid al-Adha or Yawm al-Nahar. Number one, that have a bath early in the morning. Number two, put perfume on yourself. It's a sunnah. Number three is that wear the best of your clothes. Number four, say the takbirat. Number five, preferable, do not eat anything before the Eid prayer. Number six, go to pray early. Number seven, that it is recommended that all the women, including the children, including the menstruating women, should go for the Eid Salah, even if they don't have to offer Salah, or they don't have to go to the Musallah. And when you come back from Eid prayer, see to it that you take another route, not the same route in which you went for the Eid Salah. And preferable to pay Eid Salah in a Musallah, in an open ground, which is called as Eidka. Now, what is the reason that our beloved Prophet Muhammad recommended that all the women and the children, including the menstruating women, should go for the Eid Salah, even if they don't have to offer Salah, even, even if they don't have to go and pray? What is the reason? Why did the Prophet say that you go from one route and when you come back, take the other route? Why did he say that pray in a large place Eidka? For all this, we come to know that the reason is so that it boosts the morale of the Muslims. Normally, we Muslims offer five times Salah congregation in the mosque. Once a week in Juma, we have a bigger congregation. We pray in the Juma mosque. The congregation is multiple times bigger than what congregation we have during the five times Salah. And twice in the year, during the Eidain, the Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, the Prophet recommended that you pray in an open ground known as the Eidga. Why? So that a larger number can gather. Imagine if you're living in a village and during the Eid Salah come to know there are 30,000 Muslims, there are 40,000 Muslims. The morale of the Muslims is boosted. And if you're living in an area which has got non-Muslims also, the non-Muslim will think 10 times before interfering with the Muslims. Oh, the Muslims are 30,000 in number, 40,000 in number. Imagine if you're living in a big city and if you pray in one Eid in which 100,000 gather, or a few hundred thousand gather, imagine the scenario. It will boost up the morale of the Muslims. And at the same time, would give a non-Muslim a thought that they better not interfere with the Muslims. This is the psychology, what is the reason that the beloved Prophet Wasallam even told the women and the children to go, even the women if they're menstruating. When you go through one way, come through the other way, not the same way, why? So that the other people in the other locality of that village, or of that town, or that city know, ah, the Muslims are going in large numbers. 
if you go through route A, come back through route B. So that the people of route A also come to know, the people of route B also come to know that Muslims are in large number. The next important point, when you come back, if you have the means, you sacrifice an animal. If Allah has given you the means. Later on, you go and meet your family friends. It's the day of celebration. And when you meet, the greeting is, Taqabbal Allah minna minkum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the good deeds from us and from you. Normally, in India, Pakistan, they say Eid Mubarak or other words. The sunnah is to wish taqabbal Allah minna minkum. O Allah, accept the good deeds from us and from you. You can say Eid Mubarak. It is mubah. But the right thing is as the Prophet and the Sabahs wished each other. And the day of Eid, this should be a day of celebration. Be happy, be cheerful. Let me tell you the important points of the Eid Salah before I end this talk. There are 14 important points of Eid Salah. Number one, the Eid Salah is further for every Muslim who is an adult and who is sane, male or female. Number two, it is offered between the time after the Fajr Salah and before the Dhor Salah. But the earlier you offer, the better it is. Number three, it should be offered in an open ground, a Musalla, also known as the Eidgah. Number four, that if Eid falls on a Juma, then praying Juma on that day is not fard. But it is Sunnah, it is recommended. If you pray it is good, but if you want, you can abstain from Fi Juma Salah. At that time, you should pray only the Zohar Salah. Next point, number five, is that there is no Adhan or no Akama before the Eid Salah. Number six, there is no Sunnah before the Eid Salah or after the Eid Salah. Number seven, the Eid Salah is of two rakah. Number eight, there are six extra takbirat in the first rakat before Surah Fatiha besides the takbirat ihram. Along with that, there are total seven takbirat in the first rakat before Surah Fatiha. In the second rakat, after you get up from the sujood in the starting of the second rakat, after seeing the takbir, there are five additional takbirat before the Surah Fatiha in the second rakat. Ninth point is that it is sunnah to recite Surah Allah in the first rakat and Surah Tasha in the second rakat. The tenth point is it is also a sunnah you can recite Surah Qaf in the first rakat and Surah Kamar in the second rakat. The twelfth is that after the each salah there is a khutbah. The thirteenth point is it is recommended that you hear the khutbah of the imam after the salah. But it is not a fard. It is highly recommended. And the 14th point is when you go for salah and from one route, see to it while coming back, you take the other route. These were the 14 salient points of the Eid Salah. And I've covered in brief, in as short a time as possible, the importance of the first 10 days of the Lijjah.